I'm doing. It'd be nice if I have my whistle. But I, I, I do want to thank everyone for uh, for showing up tonight uh, for our celebration of our 2015 Jefferson football season. It, it was an extreme pleasure uh, just being part of the Jefferson family. When I came here, I, I, I heard how how loyal and how enthusiastic and just how passionate um, just the whole Jefferson community is. And, and, and this is my, well, my, my first year being the head coach, and I, I got to witness that. And, and it was an extreme pleasure just being a part of this new Jefferson Grizzly uh, culture. It was, it was a great honor. Uh, I, I know I'm speaking for my coaches as well. Uh, we, we had a great time coaching your sons uh, to a very successful season. Um, so. Um, what we're going to do tonight, we're going to be honoring all of our players, uh, passing out awards. Uh, a bunch of our varsity players did win all league. Uh, we're we're going to announce that tonight. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the, uh, the cafeteria, and we got a lot of great food for you guys. Um, pictures, a lot of people have been asking me about pictures. We're going to pass out pictures when we go to the cafeteria. So if you, if you order pictures, make sure you don't leave without your pictures tonight. Uh, but yeah, so tonight is just a celebration uh, of all the hard work, all the players, all the coaches put in, and also the parents. Uh, there's no way we can have done this without you guys. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to uh, introduce our principal. He's going to say a couple words. Uh, Mr. Brockmeyer. Fantastic years, you know, over the last, for those, especially our seniors here, uh, even some of the juniors, uh, we had some tough times in our football program, uh, you know, many seasons of not winning a game, uh, really until last year, and, and, you know, shout out to Mr. Vega, who we picked up uh, in a situation that was, uh, in a, uh, when our, our program was in despair, uh, and then really, you know, this year with, uh, with, with Coach Maddox, um, and all of his other coaching staff, uh, really much so much time and, and, and commitment that they put in uh, to make sure that your your sons uh, and, and possibly one day, you know, even some uh, daughters, but my daughter loves football, I think it's seven, um, just the commitment they have to make sure not only what they're doing on the field, but what's simply amazing is how one of the biggest problems we've had here is keeping our students academically eligible to play football and where they, the, the, you know, doing the grade checks, being on these and making sure that their first, their academics uh, then leads out onto the field. So we have seen the most students uh, playing football all as a result of them working hard in the classroom, you supporting your students at home, and then the coaches making sure that they're on them in the classroom. And again, just some great things as now we're hearing of students going to college um, and, and you know, getting, looking at their opportunities uh, because really that's where we want them to go. Hopefully to play football, but really to continue their academic work uh, so that they can do their things. I just, please, one, uh, even to, you know, Coach Serge here, and it's like Coach Saudi and uh, Keanu, I don't know what they call you, Coach Keanu. Uh, so uh, that all of these, uh, oh, actually, you guys are all in the back there. Uh, so I'm not wearing my glasses. So I just want you guys to all stand right now. It's a big, huge round of applause. He's also been 
just a huge part uh, behind the scenes stuff. Again, um, a lot of people see what, what happens on the football field. It, it's all the behind the scenes stuff that really makes this run. And Mr. Felabella has, has done a really great job this year supporting the football program. He's going to be here a little later. He just got done with pra basketball practice. He'll be here a little later, and, and he's going to have a, have a few words for, for you guys. Um, but going back to behind the scene work, um, again, uh, it's really easy to see what happened on the football field, but it's all the behind the scenes stuff that, that really uh, makes this program work. And, and, and kind of the, the, the lifeblood of, of our football program, and no one ever gets to really see it, is our boosters. They, they do an amazing job here. Uh, it's just all the behind the scenes stuff. football program in just this one year alone, let alone, you know, I, I'm new to the program, but I, I can just imagine uh, the, the ladies who are on the boosters, just everything they've done for this, this program from, from the start. So uh, this year, I know they, they, they bought us the water buffalo. Hey, round of applause for the water buffalo. They brought brand new uh, line markers, and so, so our home games look very... Um, professional, uh, and, and they've done, they, they fed us before every home game, so they've done so much, uh, and, and I really want to thank everybody on the boosters, um, I'm sure they're going to talk about it, but I do encourage other people to, to join the boosters, it, it's really uh, a great way to get back to the football program, but with that said, and I, we really need to, to give a really big applause to them, I want to uh, uh, actually have one of them, Okay, so, so we're going to have the boosters talk uh, real quick, so give them a really big round of applause.
Guys, again, uh, Raina always tells me uh, Jefferson it, it, it is a big family, and, and like I said, and, and that's kind of what I witnessed this year. So, guys, all the support has been very uh, welcoming, and we thank you so much. Uh, now, speaking of uh, speaking of the program, this isn't. I, I've been trying to tell our players when I first got here. It seemed like it was the varsity team versus the JV team. It wasn't a, a, a program. And this year we were trying to teach our kids that this isn't the Jefferson varsity team, the Jefferson JV team. This is the Jefferson football program. Because if the JVs are going to feed into our varsity programs next year, uh, the year after that, we, we get fed by our JV team. So uh, the, the JV football team, I've, I've been to a lot of schools where the JV football team has been forgotten and, and, and it's just all about varsity. We definitely want to honor our JV, our JV players. Uh,
And last but not least, a guy I can't forget, <coughs> Mr. Holman. Mr. Holman, are you here today? Mr. Holman is not attending. Mr. But Mr. Holman, I wanted to go ahead and take this opportunity, if you were here, to thank him for everything he's done for us and our program. He's one of the, truly one of the kindest people I've ever met. To all the parents, thank you for all the support. I vividly remember two years ago when I first took this head coaching job. I was confident, I was determined, but I was, I was also scared and nervous. Two years later, I can truly say I could not have asked for better group parents to work with during my second go around with the school coaching. Thank you guys. <laughs> to all my players, honor your parents, listen to your parents, respect your parents, for the only one was best for you. And just know if you don't, Coach Moore's got a big four waiting for you guys when you guys come back in up here. Four. Gentlemen, it's been an amazing ride and for everything you guys have done for us, for everything you guys have done for myself, I thank you guys, sincerely. I know I've pushed you more than some of you guys have ever been pushed before. I've asked you guys to step out of your comfort zones at times. We've asked you guys to make sacrifices for the betterment of the team. You deserve most of the credit. Without you guys, we aren't even here today. Yeah. Yeah. Last but not least, I want to honor six young men who we felt, as a coaching staff, deserve a little bit more praise. So without further ado, your 2015 JV Football Award recipients. Wow. Hey, Coach Sergio Clausio, you're going to come up, grab your award, shake his hand. And stay standing up here, please. One thing I will say, I will refrain from handing awards today. Uh, out today. I have one of the frames break on me. I promise I've got awards for all you guys, and I will hand them to you guys when I get one for everybody. So when I go, I can't get everybody one, and I need to be fair to all you guys. First young man I'm going to call, I don't think he believes this is coming. Despite being a, a human highlight reel as a freshman, we challenge this guy to step his game up as a sophomore. Too often, athletic quarterbacks tend to rely on their abilities to run and their athletic abilities rather as on their ability to throw the football. That's not to take any way, anything away from this guy. We basically just asked him to do something other than what he was used to. This guy improved as a passer. This guy became a better leader. This guy became an all-around better football player. Unfortunately, he got hurt mid-season. But that's not to take anything away from him. He's an amazing player. Keeps working, he's gonna be unstoppable. Aaron Cruz. Matter is, the fact of the matter is, 
out of four of the five categories that we put up for awards, this guy came up in four of them. Wow. Isaiah Higgins. <laughs>
all of you. Um, I really want to say that it's been, it's been a while, and I, I love football. I'm the basketball coach here, but I love I love football uh, so much. And this year, more than many of the years past, the football that was played on the JV and the varsity level was every play was a play I didn't want to look away from. So I may have had to go handle something, I played director duties, but I never wanted to leave the field because I never wanted to miss a play. Uh, an 80 yard touchdown run, a uh, 60 yard touchdown pass, uh, a big hit on defense, uh, a turnover and a pick six. Um, whatever it was, I knew that a great play was about to happen. And it was so exciting, extremely exciting. Uh, I remember four or five years ago, we went through an entire season, I think it was game eight, and we forced the team to punt for the first time. Those days are way past us. The future is bright. This year was tremendous. Um, I loved every second of it. And I want to thank you guys for working with Coach Maddox and all the coaches and Coach Sergio, JV and varsity level. It was the most exciting season of football that I've seen in a very long time. So, thank you for that. Okay, football is one of those sports where you need a team. Okay, especially when you get to that varsity level, it's not it's not who is the best player. It's not Pop Warner where it's the best, fastest person on the team that thing is going to win games. You absolutely need a team when you when you play varsity football and high school and JV football, high school football. So I do want to honor every single kid on uh, this team. So what we are going to do, we made certificates for every single kid on the team. We're gonna pass them out. I'm gonna say a little something about every single kid. If you can please hold your applause to the very end to kind of speed this up, uh, and, and then we can give the whole varsity team a big warm uh, applause at the very end. Okay? So I'm gonna start with uh, the one and only sophomore on the football team. Uh, we asked the to, uh, to come up uh, in the very beginning, and very courageously he decided to play varsity football as a sophomore. He made huge plays as a defensive end. Those plays, I mean, he, he was making plays that I've never seen a sophomore make as a defensive lineman at the varsity level. Um, and that's Ulysses Ramon. All right. Next, uh, now we're now going to get to our juniors. Uh, this student uh, has been already tremendously uh, getting ready for next year. Today we're in the weight room, and I went up to him and I said, you're, you're, you're the hardest working guy in here right now. Um, he was not able to play in the beginning of, of the season, uh, but as soon as, he, as soon as he was able to play in San Mateo, he made a huge difference on, on, a huge difference on our defensive line, and even uh, just in practice, a uh, special teams player. He was making plays, he wanted to make plays, he has a tremendous amount of heart, and I'm really looking forward to him next year. We have big plans for him, and that's Aziz. Oh. Here. Oh. And he's not here, okay. Uh, next player is another junior, um, another really great special team player for us as, 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 for us as a junior. We expect big things out of him next year at the running back position, and hopefully he can crack his spot as a defensive back as well, and that's Angel Sandino. Angel, not here? Oh, there he is. Come on, Angel. All right, next player, another junior. Um, this player, uh, didn't see the field probably as much as he, as he would like to as a junior. It's really hard to see the field as a junior on any football team, especially a really good football team. But he, he was a tremendous uh, uh, practice player for us. He, he gave a lot, a lot of people, and, and I see a lot of people smiling uh, and, and starting to laugh. A lot of people don't understand that even when every, every person has a role on this team, it could be a starting running back, it can be on the kickoff team, it can be being a practice player for us. Because if our, if our practice team does not perform um, at a high level, our, our, our team, when we get into the game, is not gonna be anything. We're not gonna be ready for that. And this player was a huge practice player for us, and we're really uh, looking forward, and, he, and he's been working really hard, and hoping he, he makes a big difference next year, and that's Eduardo Diaz. Eduardo. Next player. This is another junior. Um, he, he made, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I am not a student. Sometimes he can be a huge headache, uh, but he's a, he has a great heart. He's one of those, one of those guys that, that uh, 
as soon as he was able to make a play, he, he, he made those huge bone crushing hits. You would watch him on film, and he's running at, I mean, he's a missile on the field. He's going everywhere. He's making every single play. As a lineman, he's knocking three, four, five people down at a time and looking for somebody else. He's one of those old school, tough nosed players, and we have extremely high uh, expectations for him next year, and that's Christian Gonzalez. Next player, or another junior. Um, one, we, we were blessed this year to have an extremely talented receiver court. Uh, I mean, we had we had so many receivers that can make plays on our team, and we had asked the receivers to do a lot for us this year. All right, uh, I think the sec I think uh, the, the the highest uh, receiver that the most catches by by a receiver outside of Jefferson, I think, was like 20. Okay, we had three receivers go over that on our team alone. So we're asking our receivers to catch the ball. This, this was a junior who, who has really soft hands. We expect him to, uh, to step up and, and, and uh, compete for a starting role next year, and that's Jason Kimmerudin. Jason, not here. Okay, next player. This player was an extreme, um, just an ex extreme athlete. Um, one, one, one of the best, I'm gonna say, one of the best kids I've ever coached. He has heart, he has dedication, he has leadership. Uh, he understands that there's life outside of football, so he's trying to better himself, not only as a football player, but as a young man. And he, he's done a great job for, for, for us, and that's Lutzi Lagu. <laughs> Next player, another junior. Um, I had the privilege of, of coaching him as a sophomore. We brought him up as a sophomore. And last year, uh, he, he, struggled, um, he struggled a lot as a sophomore. His work ethic, and uh, just desire to get better has turned him into not only a good lineman, but a great lineman. On the offense and defensive side of the ball, a total force to reckon with, and that's Patrick Leo, Leo Wong. <laughs> Next player, another junior. Um, this, this guy, when he figures out how good of an athlete he truly is, he's going to be a force to reckon with next year as a junior. Uh, just an amazing athlete, amazing playmaker. Um, so we're, we're hoping we're hoping he can figure out how great he can truly be. And that's Rashawn Livingston. Okay, next player. This is a, another one of those young junior receivers. Okay, uh, and again, I, I have a lot of junior receivers coming back next year that I, I, I'm very excited to coach. Uh, this player made his biggest impact on special teams. When we put him out there, we knew this player was going to give his 100% and make plays on special teams, and that's Andrew Mora. Okay, another junior, receiver. Um, one, one, of the, one of the nicest people I've ever met. He is ferocious. He plays, he plays like he's seven feet tall, all right? Now, unfortunately, he's probably five foot five, five foot six, but we have great plans for him next year as hopefully a starting receiver and a defensive back, and that's Roman Narak. All right. Uh, next player uh, played. Played. Um, th this player was, was our backup quarterback, and uh, luckily we, 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 we had an amazing starting quarterback this year. We groomed him to play quarterback next year, and he also got a lot of playing time as a linebacker, and that's Johan Nava. Not here. Not here. Okay. Uh, next player. Now, I heard, I heard a lot of things prior to him arriving to Jefferson. I heard his, I mean, his nickname was Captain America. Uh, when you look at it, it looks exactly like Captain America. Uh, he, he had to wait out uh, until San Mateo because he was a transfer, but as soon as he uh, got on the practice field, he turned heads. As soon as he got onto the playing field, he uh, made opposing teams, I mean, he, he was a nightmare to opposing teams. We have extreme high, uh, high plans for him next year. We don't know what he's going to be because he's, he's that good of an athlete. We're still trying to figure that out, but that's Claudio Sanders Perez. <laughs> Okay, next player. Another one of those young junior receivers and also uh, defensive backs. Uh, we we think that he can be one of those shutdown corners for us next year. Uh, he, he's very he's very tall. He's lanky. 
He has athletic ability. Yes. And we're really looking forward to him making a huge difference on our defense next yes. year. That's Deere Simpson. Yes. Yes. Okay, now, now that we're done with some of the smaller guys, it's time to call one of our bigger guys. Uh, th th this guy was a uh, tremendous leader on our offensive line. Now, our offense, it looks pretty when we're scoring these long touchdowns, um, but it, it, it takes a, it, it's a, a very, it's a very complex offense. Okay, uh, and our center position is the captain. He's the quarterback of our offensive line. He's, he's calling what, what the front is. He's calling uh, the, the way we're going to block it. He's kind of the quarterback of our offensive line, and he did an amazing job this year. Uh, looking forward to having him back next year, and that's Akko Tavasese. Okay, another one of our smaller guys. Uh, great work ethic, a lot of heart. Uh, when, 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 you, when you look at this guy, you don't think he can be a, a varsity running back, but I'm telling you, his heart and determination is going to make him an amazing player for us next year. He was a, a great force on the special teams for us. Uh, high expectations for him next year, that's John Torno. John Torno. Okay, another one of those uh, junior receivers who got a chance to make some really big plays for us this year, uh, especially against his, uh, his arch rivals, El Camino. When, when I say Jalen can run, Jalen is a track star. And we are really looking forward to seeing him next year compete for a starting receiver position, kickoff returner. We're ready for him to score a lot of touchdowns for us next year, and that's Jalen Weir. Okay, now to our seniors. And I'm going to tell you right now, this senior class was an amazing class, and they're truly going to be missed next year. Uh, this first player, last year, uh, Let's just say he, he was he was an average running back. Alright? He was an average running back. This year, this year, this year he wasn't just a, a speed back. Alright? Coach Moore did a great job developing this player. And he, he turned out to be one of the most electrifying players in the entire league. I, I went to the uh, the, the PL uh, coaches meeting and they, they, they even said number one was one of the most electrifying players they have ever seen in this league for a long time, for a very long time. Uh, this, this player can, uh, as soon as he got the ball, he can take anything to the house, and that's David Benjamin Jr. Okay, this player, a senior, uh, unfortunately his season ended a little early due to injury. I can tell you right now, this 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 player was was a great, uh, just a pleasure to have on the team. He always had a smile on his face. He uh, another one of those practice guys. He you could tell he literally enjoyed just being on the team. He, he just loved being on the team. Uh, very sad day when when, when he got hurt. Uh, but I, I wish him the best. Uh, and, 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 as he graduates high school, that's Joseph Bonifacio. Next player, another senior. Uh, this, this senior was a great, uh, did a great job. I think it was his first year playing varsity. Uh, sorry, first year playing high school football. I can be uh, correct in a second if that's the case. Um, made a lot of big plays for us on special teams, and he actually went down as the first Jefferson Grizzly to ever catch a pass, and that's Darian Chuck. Okay, next player. All right, next player. He can put a smile on anyone's face. All right. Uh, he's he's one of those overall good guys. Uh, he does whatever is uh, whatever is told of him, and he does it to his best ability. Uh, he's also one of the slowest dressers I've ever seen. <laughs> about him a little bit more a little later, so I'm going to make it very brief. That's Demari Paul Davis. Sorry. Uh, next player, uh, another senior. Um, now, now this player, this player last year was uh, was a, just a force to be reckoned with as a junior. An amazing uh, student of the game, an amazing leader, and unfortunately uh, battled injuries this year, but when he got in, he made plays, and that's Jeriel De La Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. Next player is a receiver. Uh, well, we can say last year, he knows who he is already. All right, last year. Last year was a tough year, okay? Let's just say that, okay? But I 
in the off season, I, I, I honestly, I can say I didn't see anyone work harder than than, than, than this guy. Uh, we started with lifting weights. He started lifting weights. I, don't, I, I, I would guess 85 pounds, and he got to the point where, where he was benching almost as much as, as, as some of the the, the, the linemen, definitely the running backs. Uh, just a, a, a great athlete on the field, great student of the game, and that's Ismail Ismail. Next player. Next player. Uh, just just an amazing athlete. Uh, coached him last year. Coached him last year. I don't think he quite understood what it meant to be uh, a varsity football player. Uh, varsity football player last year, as a senior, we had high expectations. We didn't know what to expect. Okay, I didn't know if it was going to be a repeat from his junior year or if he could turn out to be the athlete we knew he was. Now, lucky for us, he turned out to be that athlete we knew he was. Uh, just a very electrifying player, two-way starter for us. Uh, made plays when we needed him. Uh, that's Evan Evans. Uh, next player. Really great kid, um, very quiet, very quiet, but he, he, made, he made noise with his play. Um, he, he, uh, he, he made an extreme impact on our, our defense playing linebacker, was also our kicker. Uh, he kicks 40, now, now I'm going to tell you right now, I can't kick, okay? I can't kick a PAT to save my life. And if you look at a lot of the NFL, they're missing PATs now. Carlos, I'm going to come down in a second, made 40 out of 41 PATs this year, which is incredible. All right, so Carlos Godinez. Okay, this next guy. This next guy. I see him just about every single day. Every single day, he makes me laugh. He makes me happy. Uh, last year, I'm going to say it because, because he'll say it too. Last year, I, I would call him kind of soft. Okay, he was kind of soft. Well, I challenged him before the season started. I said, I need you to become a big, nasty, aggressive lineman. And that's exactly what he did. Guys, I can tell you right now, watching, I get to watch a lot of film. One of my favorite things to watch is this guy play football. And that's George All right, next player. This is my first year coaching him. I had no clue what to expect. You look at him, you think he might be, I don't know, I'm gonna embarrass him a little bit, that's okay. You, you might think he's a freshman with how, how big he is, all right? But I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, this kid, out of everyone, I would say, this kid surprised me the most. Like I said, I didn't know who he was. He showed up, I had no clue who he was, and he turned out to be one, one of the best defensive backs in the league, okay? Um, we, we as coaches keep defensive stats, and he made more tackles in our secondary than any other, any, any other one of our defensive backs. He played fearless, he played a lot larger than he is, and he made plays all year long. He was also kind of that captain in our secondary, and that's Ron Harley. <laughs> all right, next player, another senior. Uh, very great kid, worked extremely hard. Uh, another one of those guys that understands that football isn't everything, okay? Uh, very worried about his grades. I, I can tell you right now, he's gonna have a bright future uh, once he gets into college. Uh, a great pleasure to have on, on the football team. Made some big plays when he got in. That's two, two young women. Okay, next player. Next player. Uh, another one of those guys that had to wait a little bit to play, but when he when he got in, he made an immediate impact on our defensive line. Our defensive line was huge, massive. And, and very powerful in our league. And, and, and one of those uh, guys in the center of it all doesn't get as much attention as, as he should, all right, because he's not making all the tackles, because his job is to clog up the middle. He does a great job doing that, and that's Mutu Sasu Sasu. <laughs> He was kind of that, that quarterback of the defense. 
Uh, really great player, Farhan Sheikh. And our, our last player. Uh, oh, over the summer, I, I was here uh, before practice. And Mutu called me up and says, I have a friend who wants to play for us. And I said, okay. So I go out and I see this, this massive, I thought it was a man. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a way to, uh, uh, again, he, he had stopped because he was a transfer. But as soon as he, I feel bad for San Mateo, they had no clue we had him. And one of the first plays he got in, he blew up that big number 17 running back on San Mateo. Just a great force in the middle for us on the defensive line. Was a great offensive lineman for us. And we and I know he's gonna be uh, be a big player for whatever college he decides to play for next year. And that's Francis Sosuati. <laughs>
just kind of off to the side so, uh, so we can take pictures of you guys and, and give you guys a big round of applause. So, the first, uh, I'm going to do second teamers first. Uh, second team, uh, th this player, uh, again, I, I already, already kind of talked about how, how great of a player he was in the secondary for us. Uh, again, the biggest surprise on the football team, second team free safety, Armand Harlan. <laughs> I, I, I had a coach at, at, this, at, this, at this, uh, this meeting I had, and they said, when they saw him four, they, they were just uh, amazed with, with how good he was for his size. So, Armand Harlan, second team, all lead. Uh, second team, all lead on the defensive line. And this, this is a huge accomplishment because you don't see many sophomores winning second team all leagues in our league. Oh. Second team uh, defensive end, as a sophomore, you listen to your mom.
I, I went into this meeting with all these coaches and I was ready to fight for Dayton, okay? Because we're not, we're not per se a run team, okay? Okay, we're a run team. But they, San Mateo, Cappuccino, Carmine, El Camino, all these teams run the ball 90% of the time. So I, I was worried that I was going to fight for this. Without a doubt, they said no question, David was the first team running back. So good job, David. Now, these next awards, these, these are big, okay? Now, these next awards, first team, like I said, means you're the best person in, at, at your position in the league. Now, receivers, you get more, you get four receivers as first teamers, because there's four receivers. You get two running backs, because there's two running backs. What happens is, all the coaches vote, all the coaches vote. The top, the top vote getter at every position is considered to be that position of the year. Okay, so these next ones are really big. First team, receiver of the year. Receiver of the year. <laughs> Evan Evans. <laughs> so, so Devin Evans, like I said, there's four first team receivers. Devin Evans is the top point getter and is the receiver of the year in the entire league. Wow. Okay. Uh, next player. Next player. Um, I joked that he wasn't getting an award. He knows he's getting an award. Also top point getter as an offensive lineman. Offensive lineman of the year in the entire league. First team all league, George Gomez. Okay, I, I have no... I don't know how I forgot about, about, about this this one. Uh, he is a first teamer, not quite of the year, but he is a first teamer. Linebacker, dominant force. I can honestly say he probably got first team, or sorry, linebacker of the year if he did not get hurt. The coaches, all of the coaches were really um, praising him. All right, it's just he didn't play every league game. Next year, we hope you get that linebacker of the year, Lutzi Lagoo. <laughs> Hard work 
Parker in the classroom, 3.5, running back David Benjamin Jr. All right, next guy, receiver. Really great. Uh, guys, when you, when you carry a three point, I think it's an eight. I could be wrong, but I think it's a 3.8 during football season. That's an incredible feat. Joseph Bonifacio. Okay. Now, this, this is truly an amazing accomplishment. A 4.0. Okay? I have never seen three A pluses on a report card before before I looked before I saw his. 4.0, Jerry L. Del Cruz. Uh, playmaker Award. This player made plays 
Offense, defense, it didn't, special team, it didn't matter. I could have told him to be a water boy, he would have made plays somehow, he wouldn't be in that, all right? This, this, this uh, young man was uh, a force to be reckoned with on offense, made plays whenever he was in, made even bigger plays on defense. Playmaker, definitely, was also, like earlier mentioned, was the receiver of the year. That's Devin Evans. <laughs> Really quick, we're going to go to our defensive MVP. 
Alright? Now this is a tough one because this is a player who was not able to physically participate in every single game. Alright, but this player was, he almost come up to me upset every single day in practice saying, Coach, I messed up on this play. I didn't see this. I didn't take my read step. I didn't watch the full. I played that too slow. I played too soft. I came out timid. And gradually, his knowledge of the game got him to a point where even if teams tried to run away from him, he was still making the, the tackles. And I think his best game, he got 23 tackles, 21 tackles, in one game. In one game, 21 tackles. Can't wait to see him next year. Got high hopes. Get a healthy young man. Our defensive MVP, Luti LeBlue. <laughs> Offensive MVP in the entire league, Damari Paul Davis. 
Thank you.